It's time for public presentations. Comments? Uh, Gail Cruz, you're up first. Good evening, and thank you so much for taking out. This so challenged. This author was challenged. Um, this was order 1022. So Terry had to go and order another in the series just to focus in the eye. This one uh, is just terrible. 522. It was put in the library again. And this just teaches any poor little boy that goes in there that's confused. He's going to come out thinking everybody hates him. It's just it's a psychological book. It's called Other Boys. Uh, this one is written by a Japanese man that has a, a gay you. magazine for macho Japanese gay men. It's and it's in our team room by Penny Power. Um, yeah, and then... Uh, Order. If, if you're going to disrupt, if you're going to disrupt, please leave. Yes. Um, it's perfectly normal. Also, it's just... It, it's just heartbreak. It teaches kids that they're not the sex they were born with, and it goes into just every kind of sexual everything. And this, I got a few more minutes. I challenge, I challenge this book, and she bought another one. This has sodomy for play in it, masturbation for eight year olds. How to, right here. But they interrupting me. It's bad. Thank you. And Sissy. Good evening, Madam Chairman and Board. Thank you for a good discussion tonight. The discussion was good. The library is good. Y'all talking about mass resistance, we get to live rent free in people's heads. This is a grassroots organization. Sorry if you don't agree with that, but it is. Thomas Paine wrote a pamphlet February 14, 1776, gave us a Valentine's gift. It was called Common Sense. Somebody mentioned Common Sense here tonight. Uh, George Washington thought it was so good, he had the revelation, revolutionary troops read it also. His opening statement was, time makes more converts than reason. For over 230 years, the First Amendment has been interpreted in such a way as to protect our children from being sexualized by any perverse material by giving parents the right to protect their children. 230 years. Somebody mentioned history tonight that sat up here. That's our history. No one in this room can deny that. But today, libraries and schools think they know better and hide behind the First Amendment with a newly inserted socialist propaganda doctrine of intellectual freedom that flies in the face of over 230 years of our history. We don't need attorneys to show us that. That's our history. So we have three choices. Leave the books where they are, move the books to a parental section with oversight, or remove the books from our library. Our grassroots group is the only group that has offered a compromise a compromise. Move the books. That's a compromise. We're not standing lockstep. It's a compromise. Move the books to a parental shelf. Intellectual freedom, as you have defined it, has never been applied to the First Amendment in the Bill of Rights. We have 230 years of history and precedent to show that. And I'm sorry if the attorneys don't agree with that. Hannah Van Haas, is that right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Hello, I 
I'd just like to thank the uh, board for allowing us to speak. Um, sorry, I'm just chuckling because I never knew that such a large group of people could find children's books so sexy. <laughs> I just think it's odd. Um, uh, I really came today to just uh, thank the library and the people that work here. Um, I just think they're doing such a wonderful job. Um, after leaving, uh, you know, a very large uh, library system um, to move out here, uh, you know, I was worried I wouldn't have the same access to educational materials or to like reading material because I'm an avid reader. I love to read. Um, so uh, I was very happily surprised um, that there was a public library here. And actually, on the first day I moved in, um, two years ago now, I got a library card <laughs> for the library. And I just think this collection is really great. I have never found a library um, that has like the full collection of One Punch Man. I'm just, I'm very pleased. Like right after this meeting, I'm going to go check out a bunch of books. Um, I also uh, quite often use the Libby app to download um, digital books when I can't um, make it into the library uh, for physical copies. Um, and I just uh, worry that pulling the library out of the WLA will decrease um, the, uh, the amount of books that are available to me as a consumer um, or as a participant in the library system. So yeah, I just worry a bit about that. Um, but ultimately, I would really like to uh, thank and commend the library staff for you know, grace under fire and giving us you know a really great place to come um, and find educational and reading materials. So, thank you. Thank you. Ben Never. Hello. There are already banned books in America. Publishers refuse to publish them, Amazon won't sell them, and they won't show up on Google searches. To actually ban a book, you have to be in control of the production and distribution. The entire process is behind the scenes and quiet to avoid promotion. This is very different from not choosing a book to be in a library that has limited shelf space. The type of censorship that many here claim to be against has already happened in this library. Pro-life, Christian, traditional family, American, capitalist, white, and male are some of the views that are not allowed or looked down upon, especially in the teen room. To get back to a balanced collection, books would need to be removed and replaced with these underrepresented concepts. In addition to actual book banning, the methods used to remove these ideas have included selection and weeding with a bias. The bias might even be implicit. When you only consider purchasing books reviewed by organizations with ties to the Marxist Library Association, bias is already included. Why do you consider intersectionality when choosing new books? When a book isn't checked out often, you can promote it or you can get rid of it. Do you only choose the former with LGBT books? The most blatant example of this kind of censorship is Kirk Cameron being denied a story or at 50 different libraries many of which had already paid a drag queen for story hour. Would this library hire or allow Kirk Cameron to read? You threaten us with not allowing the Bible, yet has it, it has already been effectively removed from schools, and a positive view of it is already not allowed in this library. Formal challenges are designed to promote books and educate the person who challenged them on what is deceptively labeled intellectual freedom, not to reconsider the material. New increased, in the increased interest in the material is used in as, as an excuse to keep it, making it nearly impossible to remove inappropriate material. There is a real problem here. When you are introducing kids to sexual ideas, there is no formal system to object, object. We can only ask the people who chose it in the first place if they made the right choice. Then, the books are heavily pro promoted and falsely labeled as banned. Thank you re for responding to an informal complaint and removing one pornographic movie from this library. We do agree that this type of censorship is reasonable. We now know that you can remove inappropriate material. In fact, books are removed from the library on a regular basis. We should remove all pornographic and sexually explicit obscene books and movies from children's access, not just what provokes your heterophobia. I hope you can see that providing children with material that introduces them to new and perverse sexual ideas is wrong. Quit contributing to the downfall of society. Please use better judgment and develop a decent collection. Thank you.
Thank you, Ben. Jane Gebhardt. Hello, I'm Jane Gebhardt. I have belonged to WLA for 25 years and have belonged to the ALA from 2016 to 2018 so that I could attend an amazing conference in Colorado. We living in Wyoming were very fortunate to have these two LA <coughs> ALA programs so close to us. Going to all of these conferences never made me want to indoctrinate children. My concern with the current library board is that they have tunnel vision. They have, certain, they have a certain agenda that they want and don't look beyond this and see what every other great thing the library has to offer to the community of Gillette. In October, the Holy Cross workshop by Kylie McCormick, it was a three-part workshop on three Saturdays, over 30 people each workshop. It was amazing. No board members were there. The library offers knitting and crocheting classes once a month. The knitting class is taught by a local retired marrying <coughs> veteran. Did you know that? John Barrasso did, and he took note of that. In all the classes, no board members have been there. In December 18th, Craig Johnson came and read his yearly Christmas short story. The Wyoming room was packed with the public. No board members were there. And the week of Christmas, in the atrium, the grand piano was moved out, of it, was out by the Christmas tree, and they had wonderful piano music certain times of the day. We, had a, we have a lot of musicians in this community. They gave us their time and talents. No board members were there. When the library was flooded in the fall, and we were closed for nine days, and everybody was allowed back into the building, three departments were displaced out of the basement. Not sure the board knows what departments were displaced with no offices, and not sure if they have been in the basement to look at the mess. Although there is, a, there is an end in sight with the carpeting being replaced, this month, everyone will have their workspace back again. I'm curious with the plan of the book review committee that is handpicked by Sage Bear. Who's going to call the patron who has requested a book and your committee doesn't think it fits into their community standards? The librarian or the committee? I personally think that Sage or Chelsea should call them and explain to the patron about their standards of reading materials. My question is also when Sage and Chuck were on the radio and talked about Lawn Boy and that challenge, <coughs> the challenge that never, they never clarified with Vic that they were talking about the wrong book. The book challenge was about a book, the book challenge was a, was a book that was never in the juvenile collection. It was always in the adult fiction collection. That tells me the person who put in the challenge did not read the information well enough from the mass resistance people. <laughs> the library staff keeps working through all of this. What I find funny about the board is that they keep questioning the capability of the staff ordering books for the library. They only talk about the horrible collection of the books that we have. They don't look at the wonderful books that we have or the great programs that are in the library. October 16th, after the board meeting, though, Chuck came in and told the told the RG, told Gary to tell the staff the board is behind them. That's amusing. <laughs> Janet Carp. My name is Janet Tharp and I'm a resident of Gillette and I'm an avid library user and I read the real books. I don't read the e-books so keep the real books on the shelf. <laughs> um, tonight I'm speaking about a concerning statement that was made by a board member at the January 5th collection development workshop and the statement was the librarians hide behind the collection development policy and they order what they want. Well, a comment like that casts a pretty negative shadow on the work that our librarians do. And in my 27 years working in the children's department, I never ordered just what I wanted. I, first of all, was bound by budget constraints. We only had a certain amount of money, and it wasn't an endless pot of money. Now, the money had to last for 10 to 12 months. 
Furthermore, I understood that that money was taxpayer dollars, and I always kept that in mind. Um, I was a good steward of the library dollars when I was selecting books. There's other factors that I had to consider when I selected items for ordering. Um, patron requests, community interests, and community needs, updates and replacements for worn and outdated materials, new books within a series, independent book reviews, collection needs, copyright dates, and yes, award books. Our library probably has every Caldecott book and every Newberry book that has ever been published or awarded, and that collection through the years when I worked at the library was visited quite often, especially by people taking children's lit courses in our own community and at Black Hill State University. Just because there's no circulation stat on an item does not mean that it hasn't been viewed within the library. We have a browsing collection too. It isn't just a checkout collection. Um, and I also worked under the direction of my supervisor. She had the last say on what got ordered. Um, in closing, I asked the board um, to give the group that's here tonight or in the future names of specific books that were ordered because the librarian hid behind the collection development policy and ordered what they wanted. Thank you. Darla Khan. My name is Darla Decker Cotton. Madam Chair and Board, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Let me start by saying that I am the daughter of an English teacher who's taught with who taught who taught with or taught with many people in this audience. She also served time on the school board. My mother was an avid reader. She taught drama, speech and debate, creative writing, composition, to name a few. She had many students who joined drama or speech and debate and who did so because they loved that she opened their eyes to things they never would have seen or understood had she not taught the subject in school. I remember her saying that you, made, you make a solid argument and then you find the information at the public library to back it up. After presenting the information, she asked you to present the other side of the argument, which most of the time the person or myself was never prepared for because they were so focused on the argument they believed in. They failed to overlook the argument or debate from the other side. Mrs. Decker, or Mrs. D, as her students called her, would say, if you're going to debate a topic, you better know it from the inside out on both sides of the issue, and you should be able to argue both with the same ferocity and belief, no matter how you feel about the topic, if you want to win the debate. If you, if you have done your research, then any argument or counterattack would be met with a swift fact that you discovered on your journey of the information. That brings me to my point. This has all gone way beyond book challenges. <clears throat> you have now dove into the deep end to say that you know what is best for a public library and its collection development policy. Public libraries serve all citizens of all ages, regardless of ethnicity, demographics, income, or lifestyle. They offer programs with a wide range of literacy opportunities with diverse cultural experiences. Public libraries exist to support our First Amendment right to read. And the law doesn't matter, Mr. Sisti. Also, they, they defend, public libraries exist to support our First Amendment right. They defend it unequivocally, our libraries defend it unequivocally through collection development policies that have been carefully drafted by educated, knowledgeable librarians to make sure that these inalienable rights are there for all people, regardless of ethnicity, lifestyle, demographics, and income. Some on this advisory board have made it their mission to dictate a collection development policy that they have little knowledge or education or experience with. You are an advisory board, which is an extension of the county commission. One thing that keeps coming to mind that it, this is supposed to be a nonpartisan board, yet has become the very opposite. One of the Republicans' core values is less government oversight, and yet here you are trying to change every part of the library every part of the public library and its policies. You have even gone so far to say that you have oversight on if a librarian should be fired if, in your opinion, they have violated a policy set by you. Never mind that the county has an HR department that is supposed to do that. A public library is public and should be reflective of all those that are part of that public, not just the ones you see fit or that meet your moral compass.
Hi, my name is Sherry England, and I want to uh, express my gratitude to the staff, um, Terry especially. Uh, you and your staff are amazing, outstanding. Um, I have, in all my years living here, so almost 30 years, I've never come into the library, and I, I always come into the library, and I was always greeted um, like I was important and needed, you know, if I needed something. And I see you do that, and your staff do that with everyone. You pay attention to your customers. Um, you also collaborate with all the nonprofits that work with youth, and um, really, uh, I, it, people don't know how much you do or how much the library does in that aspect. And I don't think um, a lot of us know. But anyway, so we need to get that information out. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say was, um, as far as sexualization, I haven't read many of the books that, I mean, I've read a lot of the books, and I didn't get that any of them would sexualize our kids, but I sure have met a lot of kids that were sexualized by pastors and other uh, predators in our community and um, and it happened by people not books it's just truth guys been working 30 years with kids and families okay the other thing i want to say is i don't understand why you're not going with the library association you have been told by hr with the county why you know the that's the professional that you guys are supposed to be looking at and looking up to, so you're not getting into legal trouble. So I guess if you want to get into legal trouble, go ahead. I mean, you're only pissing away our 1% money. Yeah. Um, so, um, the other thing is you're really alienating staff. I can't say that from staff. I haven't talked to them, but boy, just listening to you guys speak about the staff and to Terry, I am I'm offended for them. I really think you need to work on your relationship. How are you supposed to work together and do what you need to do without building that relationship? That's key. I, I don't get it, guys. You, that's something you really need to, and don't, and you're micromanaging. I am so happy you're going to the board training. I'm going to the board training, but you don't micromanage your executive director. That is not your job. Your job is policy and making sure it's financially sound. Yes. You're micromanaging. <sighs> yeah, you can see I'm a little pissed. <laughs> okay, so um, I would, I, I don't know, I, I, that's it. Thank you for listening. You have one thing under your hat. You're the first library board in the state of Wyoming to be a defendant in a lawsuit and lose it. Okay? Not only that, you had well enough to having to tell me your lawyer's name, but I had to go outside of your system to do it. Your system isn't working, and it's going to come back to hurt you. You're stuck with pastors facing that way when they give their invocation. The invocation is to the people that are in charge. They are not to the audience. Okay? Because I'm not going to stand around and let some Christian tell me all about how good I have to be to you. Okay? And I'm not going to stand outside waiting for you, for him to decide what he's going to say. Now, I'm going over this with the county commissioners here in a couple of weeks. But in the next meetings, that pastor needs to be facing you, not me. Is that clear? If it isn't, we'll find out in court. Okay? Now, next thing. Uh, both citing sex education. You want more Christian stuff in the library, okay, no problem. But you're pushing a law 
that won't let you sex or educate my type of children with how I think they should be educated. That includes trans education and all this stuff that the lady over here was bitching about. Okay. And second, can I have a few minutes without the time and going up? Okay. And uh, George Washington, he never took communion in his entire life. Went to church every Sunday. Never once got out of his pew. He only ever wrote the word God one time. And they're not really sure he wrote it because it was in a talk he gave to his people, his soldiers, during the American Civil War. Not Civil War. War of Independence, and they're not so sure that it wasn't one of his subordinates that wrote the speech. Oh, sexualizing. If you look that up in the dictionary, that's something that goes on in a person's head. It doesn't matter. You can sexualize kids' clothes. You can sexualize any part of what kids do. Any board member comments? one thing to say um, and I want to make it crystal clear and I know I said this before but I have never ever told anyone that you should not read something and you I talked a lot of my high school kids late that I had back in the 2000 or 2000 and um, I always was like try it whatever um, and I am not one of those that says um, let's just move the books until I read it. There's only one book on record that I have said that needs to be moved. And it was just because of some of the um, things that were described in there that could get somebody easily in trouble by the law. And um, I just want to make that crystal clear where I stand. Because sometimes you look at a group and um, you can put us all together or you can look at us individually to what we believe. Um, my example tonight was just an example, but I've also read it and I've told a couple people there's some really good books like The Last Night at Tele Telegraph Club, and I've told some people to read that, and that's LGBT. So, you know, please be respectful to some degree that we, you know, challenge some things. Um, I had a friend who we had lunch with the other day. And we are not the only library out here looking at policy development. There's there's libraries across the country that are looking at library the, their policies again. And I've watched many, many library boards. You can ask my husband. He comes home from work and I'll be watching those boards. And he's like, well, what are you listening to? And everybody's dealing with it. Um, what am I, the gal in Grand Island, Nebraska, their board's looking at the policies. So I think it's just because a lot of stuff's coming up and everybody just wants to be careful of what we're doing across the board. So thank you for, I really appreciate all your feedback, whether you're pro, whether, you know, it gives me a lot of things to think about. And, you know, if you have any other questions for me, email me. I'm home right now recovering, so I have a lot of time to answer things. Have a motion to adjourn? I'd make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.